Monte Carlo simulations for solving structural reliability problems. Uh, earlier in this course, in week three, uh, part A, uh, we had a brief introduction to the subject and, and this is what uh, we concluded. Uh, if we are simulating a system uh, and that system has non-negligible uncertainties in one or more of its aspects, then uh, we need to incorporate that probabilistic information uh, in the system simulation. And that can be done, those simulation of random events uh, is done through Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, the outcomes of MCS are many types. Uh, we can evaluate expectations of functions of random variables, uh, which in turn can be used for estimation of probabilities, especially rare probabilities, uh, or establish uh, some system statistics, some response statistics, uh, or we can obtain um, time histories of uh, a system response. Uh, and this is obviously essential uh, when we do not have uh, a closed form solution of, of the system's behavior. Uh, what is important and what is most relevant here when we're talking about MCS for structural reliability problems is how to use it for estimating rare probabilities. Uh, and that's what I have uh, highlighted in red uh, on your screen. So uh, that's going to be our focus in today's lecture. Now, um, we solved one uh, example problem uh, during that first introduction, which was estimation uh, of pi. And we showed that pi can be estimated uh, using a probability. It was not a rare probability, of course, but uh, it can be done very uh, elegantly uh, by simulating random points, uh, random points in the unit uh, circle inscribed in a square of size 2 by 2. So um, intuitively, and then it can be proved uh, that if the points are indeed generated randomly uh, in that square, then uh, the fraction of points falling within the circle would be related to the ratio of the two areas, the area of the circle to the area of the square. And that gave us the probability of generating points within the circle as pi by 4. And we showed that if we estimate this by Monte Carlo simulations, if we can generate x and y independently uh, between minus 1 and plus 1, and from a uniform distribution each, then uh, we can indeed estimate uh, pi and the estimate became better and better as more and more samples were generated. So this, uh, when we look at uh, in the structural context, um, what you see here, the, uh, the estimate is a random variable. Its mean is the true uh, value uh, and its variance is uh, inversely proportional to the sample size. So uh, these concepts can be uh, carried nicely to a structural reliability situation. So let's, uh, let's recap what we want to do uh, in formulating and solving a structural reliability problem. So here, uh, let's say we have uh, a, a beam uh, under two loads and uh, we have a good definition of the system and its performance uh, and um, what are the clear limits of satisfactory performance. Uh, we have been doing this for the last few weeks uh, and uh, we can identify uh, the properties that are important in the mechanics of the problem uh, and uh, any uncertainty, any relevant probabilistic information uh, we should have or we should be able to get. And then we have an appropriate system model uh, which relates the output with the inputs and the system properties. And obviously we are looking at physics-based uh, definition of system behavior and failure, which is why we are talking about this uh, capacity demand type reliability. And now once we have been able to express failure 
in a clear mathematical a term involving the mechanics of the problem and the system parameters then uh, we are able to or we should like to compute the probability of failure and um, we did this uh, the last few lectures using an approximate method called uh, FORM first order reliability method and uh, an improvement to that called the second order reliability method uh, so if we generalize uh, this uh, in uh, the context of the random variables x, uh, what we have is we have a set of basic variables which define the problem, uh, a performance function, and this part of the course we are now talking only about a single performance function. We are talking about element or component level reliability. So. Uh, but this can easily be generalized, especially in the context of Monte Carlo simulations. So we have a performance function g of the x vector and uh, g of x equals 0 is our limit state equation. And on the right, uh, you see on the two-dimensional space of x1 and x2, how uh, this g of x can split the domain into safe and failed or unsafe regions. So when we compute failure probability, what we essentially do is uh, estimate the probability content of that failed subset. Uh, so uh, this is then the mathematical description of the probability of failure. We have the failure region, uh, gamma safe complement, uh, and the probability content of that region that x belongs to uh, gamma safe complement is by definition p of uh, gx less than 0 and that is given by the n-dimensional integration of the uh, joint density function uh, of the x vector over the region where g is less than 0 or the unsafe region or the failed region. So uh, this has been our problem set up and uh, as I said uh, we look broadly at uh, two kinds of uh, methods of computing that failure probability. Simple problems can be solved analytically and we solve many of them. And then we started looking at approximate methods, uh, the FORM, uh, the SORM, and today uh, we are going to look at simulation based methods, uh, the direct Monte Carlo, also known as brute force Monte Carlo. And then uh, in the next lecture, we are going to look at uh, important sampling which is one of the variance reduction techniques.